In 2008, Ricardo Kaká was on top of the world. At just 26 years old, the man had already won a World Cup with Brazil, the Serie A and Champions League title with AC Milan, and was just about to receive his very first Ballon d'Or. The last person to ever win it before the Messi and Ronaldo era. So, how did the world's best footballer at the time start to decline only a few years later? Hey guys, what's up? It's Raymar, back again for another video, and today, we're gonna look at what happened to Kaká's career. But before we start, I just want to give a huge shout out to Ibrahim Khalil for emailing me and suggesting this topic. So with that being said, let's get on to it. Flashback to 2002 where a young 20-year-old Ricardo Kaká was just beginning his professional career at Sao Paulo Football Club in Brazil. Coming fresh off a season where he had just led his team to its first and only Torneio Rio Championship. The following summer in the 2002 World Cup in South Korea, Kaká would be called up to join Brazil's men's team. If you don't remember how dominant this Brazil team was, they had guys like Ronaldo, Ronaldinho, Rivaldo, Roberto Carlos, and Cafu, all of which are legendary Brazilian players that were all superstars in their respective clubs. And although Kaká was the youngest player on that Brazilian squad, his coach Luiz Felipe Scolari did let him play significant minutes because he believed Kaká could be nurtured into another world-class Brazilian talent. And although Kaká might not have been a starter, he did play a lot of minutes for a guy who was the youngest member on the squad and helped them secure their spot on the final. Brazil would end up becoming the champions of the 2002 World Cup, and big European clubs finally started to pay more attention to the young Kaká. After seeing his skill and composure on the world stage at such a young age, in 2003 that attention would finally lead to AC Milan chasing for Kaká's signature. Only 21 years old at the time, it would only take him a couple of weeks to finally break into the starting 11 for Milan. Kaká's play would almost immediately start making an impact on his squad. He would play as the central attacking midfielder behind legendary striker Andriy Shevchenko and supporting Andrea Pirlo, Clarence Seedorf, Massimo Ambrosini, and Gennaro Gattuso, which, if you ask me, is a very solid midfield lineup. This AC Milan squad with Kaká would end up becoming the 2003-2004 Serie A champions, bringing him his very first trophy playing for a European club, and this was only the start of his success and glory years with the club. In 2005, Kaká would help his team win the Supercoppa Italian and help bring Milan into the Champions League final. Although they unfortunately lost 2-3 in a penalty shootout against Liverpool, Kaká still had an amazing season, landing him the Serie A Player of the Year award, UEFA Midfielder of the Year award, and his very first Ballon d'Or nomination. In his last two seasons with Milan, Kaká would break out into superstardom as Andriy Shevchenko's departure to the Premier League would open up Kaká as the main offensive option for Milan. In 2006, Kaká would win his first Serie A Player of the Year award, was the Champions League top scorer, was awarded the Champions League Golden Boot, won the Champions League, and was named into FIFA's World Eleven. In 2007, he would win his second Serie A Player of the Year award, be named into his second FIFA World Eleven, won the UEFA Super Cup trophy, won the FIFA Club World Cup trophy, golden ball, and leader in top assists, the FIFA World Player Award, and finally the 2007 Ballon d'Or. Kaká was so famous and successful in his last two seasons with AC Milan that he, if you didn't know, actually became the world's very first athlete to reach over 10 million Twitter followers. I mean, can you imagine that? No other athlete had ever amassed such a huge following before he had. Not even Cristiano Ronaldo, Messi, or LeBron James. So, of course, many clubs had wanted Kaká for the following season after seeing how dominant of a player he was. And and after all the speculation, Real Madrid finally moved in to make a whopping 68.5 million euro transfer fee. But not only did they get Kaká, but they also made a record-breaking transfer fee of 94 million euros for Cristiano Ronaldo. 
Kaká's first year with Madrid was looking good so far. He scored 9 goals and had 8 assists in 33 games without having to bear the offensive load as he did in Milan. But unfortunately, Kaká's season was cut short when he faced a knee injury and had to get surgery to relieve the prolonging pain. Kaká would sit out until halfway through the 2010 season, but when he was finally declared fit to play, he scored 7 goals and had 6 assists in 20 appearances. Unfortunately, once again, Kaká had to get another surgery after he was diagnosed with iliotibial band syndrome, which pretty much means that the cartilage in his knees had no proper support which would cause a lot of rough tension and pain every time he would run. Kaká ended up once again having to sit out for the remaining of the season. Because Madrid really needed a central midfielder, they went ahead and got Mesut Ozil to replace Kaká while he was recovering. Some of you could even say that this purchase already showed that the Real Madrid front office didn't fully invest or believe in Kaká as a player. During this time, another crucial change in the Santiago Bernabeu was made with the addition of Portuguese coach Jose Mourinho, and from there, things would start to go downhill. While Kaká was out, Ozil began to impress Jose Mourinho. And even though everyone was expecting Ozil to go back to the bench after Kaká had been healthy again, Mourinho had other plans. Kaká's position would start to be under major threat. Instead of his starting position at midfield, Kaká would return from his injury and slowly but surely start to get frozen out of the starting lineup. He often came out as a substitution playing significantly less minutes and his influence on coach Jose Mourinho would start to diminish. Kaká's number of goals and assists would be less and less every season, and most of the time, he wouldn't even have an opportunity to play. Even Kaká himself says that he was completely destroyed at Real Madrid and that his relationship with coach Jose Mourinho was very difficult. He says Jose Mourinho was a very difficult coach to work with, and that every time he believed that he would get a chance to play, it never really happened. Kaká also said that I didn't get the chance to prove my form to him. I trained hard, fought, and prayed so much, but without the coach having faith in me, I realized I couldn't work with him. And if you think about it, that's absolutely crazy. Letting a person who was considered the best footballer in the world just a few years ago and a person that you paid a ton of money for even despite all the injury just rot away on the bench and this was all done for what just one la liga title and one super cup in three years yeah great coaching for sure and okay, I'll keep it real and honest with you guys, I'm not even gonna lie, but just let it be known right now that I do not and have never liked Jose Mourinho as a coach. And as a Madrid fan, I was very happy when he finally left. But anyways, after the 2013 season with Real Madrid, Kaká would be heading back to AC Milan in which he said, I was so happy after leaving Real Madrid and returning to Milan, especially after Mourinho had said that I was one of the most professional players that he had ever worked with. And let me just say, if I was Kaká and heard this from Mourinho, I'd be pretty pissed. After that, Kaká would never really return back to his athletic and top form, but he was still a great midfielder and playmaker. After his one last year with AC Milan in 2014, he would move on to the MLS and play for the Orlando City Football Club, and then go off on a loan back to his original club, Sao Paulo, before returning back to Orlando City in which he finally retired in 2017, only at the age of 36. And honestly, it's really sad to see such an amazing talent like Kaká go to waste, especially with all those injuries he suffered because it really shortened his prime years and his fitness. We could have seen many more years and seasons of Kaká being in top form if it wasn't for all those unfortunate injuries and Jose Mourinho benching him. I was pretty mad seeing Kaká wasted on the bench as a young Madrid fan. And I even remember getting my first ever FIFA game which was FIFA 11 just because he was on the cover. But he had an amazing career regardless and will be remembered as one of the all-time maestros of the game. 
If you guys have made it to the end of this video, go ahead and comment FIFA 11 so I know who the real fans are. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like as it really does help support my channel. Also, if you're new, make sure you're subscribed and hit that notification button so you don't miss out on any of the best football content. Thank you so much for all the love and support, and I'll see you in the next one.